afternoon everyone, I'm Kula, welcome back to Fish and Tips. Last episode we spoke about the comb bag, this time let's go through the spread of rod jigging. So, Uncle, you have to help me out with this. What is spreader rod jigging? Spreader rod jigging, it's um, another form of midwater fishing for, for tunas um, down deep. It's a length of rod, about two to three millimeters in diameter, a meter long. On the other end, you have a leader and a hook. You could put octopus squid or um, um, chicken, chicken or bird, bird feathers, oh. and you need to jig. That's why it's called spreader rod or spreader bar jigging. You need to jig this gear. Also, what is jigging? Like, what is jigging? What, why, why the word jigging? Um, I know you used to jig school a lot. <laughs> um, your dad told me this. Your dad told me this. So for us fishers, jigging is jerking the, the your your baited lure to make it up, up swim like a active fish. Okay. So it's ah. pulling, stop, pull. You can either use your arms, or some people today use a fiberglass fishing pole. Interesting. It's just jerking the, the lure in the water, so it kind of behaves like a little bit of fishing. How is this jigging fishing technique uh, sustainable for us? Again, we are targeting our nearshore palette, which is a tuna species. It's sustainable, you're catching one at a time, you're retrieving your gear, you're not leaving the gear in the water. And we're targeting Resilient, more resilient species such as yellowfin or big eye tuna. Yamo. We're good? Yes, you I like it? that one, yes. yes. Sashimi. What are the materials that we need? A, a rod, either stainless steel or heavily galvanized. It's about three millimeter diameter. You need two uh, crane swivels on the end. I've already attached this. You need a weight. Okay, and the egg sinker. Um, important step here is the egg sinker is about one third. Mm. Right, it's not in the middle. It's roughly about Why one third the length. Because that's going to help the jigging motion. Right? Okay. So the spreader bar is better on there. You need a snap. Snap. That goes to your main line. You need a leader line, a lure. I've just got these here. You can either use an octopus, rubber octopus, or chicken feathers, bird feathers, and then a hook. All right. Thank you. This is how we prepare our gear. Attach the sinker about 30 centimeters from the end of the spreader rod and ensure that it is locked in place. Attach a swivel to each end of the spreader rod. Connect the main line to the top end swivel. Connect the leader line to the bottom end swivel. Attach the lure and hook to the end of the leader. Choose a lure. I like the glow in the dark ones. I was going to put that one back and give it No, I wanted that one originally, but I wasn't sure. Out on the water, lower your prepared spreader rod rig down to your desired depth.
pull the line back using a jerky up and down motion. The spreader rod increases the jerky motion of the lure. When the lure is jerked up and down, it gives the appearance of a small bait fish which will attract the large tuna to our hook. You are right handed, you have big, you have big muscles. <laughs> Spreader rod jigging can be paired with other midwater fishing techniques that rely on chumming, like the cone bag fishing method. When using a method like this, lower your spreader rod down current from the chum so the rod can benefit from the dispersed chum. Try it out with your crew. when using the spreader rod jigging. Tip one, best time to use this fishing method is early morning or late afternoon when the tuna is at the surface. Tip two, if there is no strike, try changing your lures. Tip three, you can use this method at night by fitting a glow bead at the top of your hook. Thanks so much for joining us on this season of Fish and Tips. I hope you've enjoyed learning the traditional methods with me. Yes! Check out our bonus episodes to help improve these fishing methods. Join us next season for night fishing. Kakite!